Hey there, welcome back to the Filthy Rich Writer YouTube channel. Now today, you are going to get a special sneak peek into how we coach our students in the Comprehensive Copywriting Academy. This, what's coming up, is one of our laser coaching sessions, which are 10 minute sessions designed to answer really any questions that students bring to us. Uh, now you might hear some CCA related terms, uh, things like Pitchapalooza, which is a student only event, um, but head down to the description below if you need a little bit more context. Now, our students are all in different states of learning copywriting and starting their careers and building their careers and all that kind of thing. And also, some of them want to be freelance, some of them want to be part-time, some of them want to be on staff. So you are going to hear a variety of different questions related to copywriting, business, all kinds of stuff. But I guarantee it's all going to be pretty helpful. So if you want to check out any other topics we cover, make sure you subscribe to the Laser Coaching Playlist. Exciting, right? Now, even though you are not the one in the hot seat, I'm positive you will still learn a lot. So without further ado, let's get to it. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. Excited oh, yeah. to talk to you. <laughs> So are we, so are we. Yeah, because I only watch you um, in the, you know, live videos and Pichapalooza. And I can't believe I'm talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> how excited we can't you believe are. we're talking to you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I can't believe that you're a real person. Okay. Oh, very real. A little <laughs> too real, real, maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is it that I can say to my clients because um you know what i don't know what happened i am really the type that i wouldn't reach out to people but after i watched the feature palooza i i just did it i don't i even because i booked a um a coaching call with adele and then i told her i don't know what happened i just did it and then i'm lucky enough that i've had you know them replied to me so i was even telling my husband i remember one of them replied to me at around 11 at night and then I was jumping because I was in the walk-in closet because I don't want you know to wake up everybody. But I was jumping and then I, I woke up my husband. He said, guess what? Someone replied to me. And this is a cold pitch. I, I don't, the person doesn't know me. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I told my husband, I learned something from the Pichapalooza. So, um, but the thing is I've had discovery calls with them, but I felt that they were not convinced that they need a copywriter. Um, I've, I've listened to the uh, nail your calls mm -hmm. three times. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to believe that I've done it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when you say you feel like they haven't felt like they need a copywriter, what gives you that feeling? How do the calls end? It was a good call. Um, with this shawarma place, I really loved his shawarma. So um, he even asked me to give him the code. So I've sent him my rates. That was Tuesday. I would um, okay. email him again today to follow it up. Um, during the call, um, he was even the one who told me first, okay, let's give it a try. Um, I want you to write my about me page and then my welcome email. Um, but because he has also plans of rebranding, so I don't know if he would want to push through with that or if you want me to do the about um, me page first. That's why I would um, send her another email today to follow it up. Mm -hmm. But um, because there was another person who reached out to me in one of the Facebook groups, he, she is a coaching, um, I don't, I'm not sure if um, if it's health or something, but she asked me what is my rate for five to seven emails a month. So I told her because I'm a newbie, so I told her uh, maybe 400 for five emails. And then she said, oh, your rate is very high. I can ask a virtual assistant to do it for $100. I was like, okay. Well, that's a <laughs> little silly. Yeah. But you also, you can't really quote a price until you you have talked with her about what the project is, right? Yes. If, they, if it's five to seven super simple emails, then it might be that- It might be that that was a high quote for yeah. her. If oh, she's thinking, yeah. you know, if she's right? thinking like this much copy in the email and yeah. you're thinking, oh, it might be a very big email- getting on the phone to make sure you understand, okay, what, what are each of these five to seven emails really going to contain and talk about? Or if they were long emails, you might have wanted to quote more, more right? Yeah, yeah. But, and yeah. she sounds like she wouldn't have taken it, but that's sure. okay. Then her, her, her expectations are a little bit off, but you can't really know until you talk with them about what the project entails. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah, I would always tell them that, um, that I honestly, I don't know. I need to know the scope of the work first. Yes. But, um, you know, sometimes they would just keep on messaging you on Facebook before they want to get into the call. Mm -hmm. So when she told me that um, a virtual assistant can do it for $100, I was like, I don't know what to say <laughs> because, okay, 100 <laughs> Yeah. You know, yeah. here's the thing is that virtual people say, oh, my virtual assistant will write it your virtual assistant is not a copywriter. They're not going to do good work. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if a virtual assistant could write copy, they wouldn't be virtually assisting. They they'd would be, be a writing copy because they'd be making yeah. so much more money, right? Yes, yes. But exactly. if she if she believes that her virtual assistant can do it and can do it better or equally as good, then best of luck to her. Best of luck yeah. to her. She's not <laughs> the right client anyway. You know what? Before I feel, you know, bad if, people doesn't reply to me. But after the Pisha Palooza, I always remember what you said. If they don't reply or if they are, because I there's another client, sorry. Um, so this is one of the uh, one of the famous um, furniture shop here in Calgary. So I reached out to them and then they replied and then they asked for a sample, um, sample blog because she mm -hmm. needs um, four blog posts every month. Mm -hmm. So um, I wrote a sample um, blog post for her. When, when she was not really that nice when I first talked to her. Um, because of course I was trying to be friendly, right? Because first I really like their products. Mm -hmm. I've purchased a bed and a couch from them. So I know that the, their quality is really good. So I was so excited when I talked to her and then she was like, okay, so just make a sample first. And then uh, because I was emailing um, her husband. So I told her, okay, should I just email you through your husband's um, email or yeah. She said, yeah. And then, okay, okay, should I tell her that you're expecting? No, no, you don't need to tell, tell him that. He's my husband. I was like, okay. <laughs> so, but I gave her the sample and she was happy. She paid me $60 for that, but she ended up telling me that um, she was able to convince her daughter to write it for her. But I was like, okay, I want to write for her, but I don't think we'll be a good fit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you have to be careful too, though, but try not to make assumptions about, you know, because sometimes too, tone can come across differently in emails, uh, or maybe they're really busy. And so they just want to send something off to you quickly. So you're not waiting. Um, yeah. But, you know, try not to make assumptions about people's intentions or things like that. And your, your, your client, um, the, the guy with the shawarma restaurant, um, yeah. a man or woman, I can't remember which we said, but um, you, 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 he's interested, he or she's interested in working with you. You know, it, I, and it sounded like you thought, oh, well, nobody's interested in working with me. And that's not the case. But you said Tuesday too, right? You sent the quote on yeah, Tuesday. Yeah. I so think. just a couple of days ago. Yeah. yeah. Do, you know, if he's busy, it, it doesn't mean that you are right in that it's a good idea to follow up and just be like, Hey, wanted to know if you had any questions, mm -hmm. but, um, but I don't make any assumptions about, well, I haven't heard from him. Therefore he doesn't want to move forward or, or it's too high or it's too low exactly. or anything. Yeah, exactly. You don't know. You don't know what's going on in their heads. You don't know what's going on in their lives. And, and quite frankly, every, every interaction you have is an opportunity to learn, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. And after you... my call with the furniture owner. Oh, sorry. You no, froze for a second, Nikki. Now oh, you're yeah. back. Oh, did I? I'm sorry. Yeah, so I had a coaching call with Adele because I really want to make it right because it's a very first client that I, I'll have. And then Adele was like, okay, um, just have to, but by the way, because she's paying virtual assistants, four virtual assistants from the Philippines, $1,000 each for 150 hours for each of them. Wow. Very so, high rate for a Filipino virtual yeah, assistant. Yeah. So um, in the Adele Philippines. Telling, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Adele was telling me, okay, um, so if you're going to compare your price, I mean, your rate for that $1,000, you can write, let's say, maybe five to six blog posts for her. But I told her, I don't think she'll be asking me to do everything. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it's okay. Um, <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, too, is that to try not to get too hung up on the idea of your first client and it has to be your first client has to be perfect. You are going to have so many clients, hundreds of clients over the course of your career. I, I think I remember which, who was technically my first client, but I don't remember what the project was. I don't remember, like, I don't remember the guy's name. I think I remember what the business was. I don't remember. 
you were going to have so many over the course of your career. The most important thing is just to learn from every interaction that you have with potential clients and, and improve where and when you can, but there are going to be plenty. Part of the reason that we recommend sending out so many pitches is because not everybody's going to get in touch with you. In fact, far fewer people are going to get in touch with you and say yes than the number of pitches that you actually send out. So take everything as, as just an opportunity to learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'd like to thank you, the both of you. Like what I said, the Pichapalooza was really great. Oh, good. (laughs) Are you still, are you still pitching? Sorry? Are you still sending out pitches? Yes. Good. Um, I'm trying this, uh, actually this week, I wasn't able to do 25. I was able to do 10 only, but next week my target is 25. That's great. The consistency is key. As long as every week you're sending a few, that's awesome. That's better yeah. than doing none. So well, and you know, it can be hard to scale up to 25. And yeah. Kate's been giving some fantastic advice about, you know, if you can't do five a day, try to do two to three. Mm-hmm. Or if yeah. you were able to do 10 last week, kind of make 10 your baseline and then try to mm-hmm. stretch to 12 or 13 right. yeah. or something like that. Yeah. The Pitch Palooza is really a good jump start. Good. Good. Like for me, I mean, I really have. So I told my husband, you really have to cooperate with me for this month. (laughs) Please, if I if I tell you I need silence and space, please get the two boys from me. (laughs) Not just this month. Yeah, Yeah, next month and the month after. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But my husband is very happy because he's really seen, um, you know, the things that I've learned. And he was really amazed whenever I tell him, oh, guess what? I, I have a discovery call with this shawarma place. And because that's her favorite shawarma place. And he was more excited than I am. <laughs> I to the owner, to the chef. And he's a great fan of that chef. Yeah. So when I was talking to the chef, he was in front of me listening. I was like, go, go, go. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's a family affair. We talk about it. The whole exactly. family gets involved. So mm-hmm. yeah. exactly. Okay. Thank you. I know it's Thank my time you. is up. Yes, yeah, so but I talk to you. So much. <laughs> you're like my, uh, you know, like uh, my idol. Oh, goodness oh. gracious. <laughs> well, thank you. I is mine I, too. Maybe so Kate deserves that. I no, do. no, <laughs> I do not. Oh, well, thank you so much. Um, and definitely let us know, post in the group to let us yeah. know how, how everything shakes keeps out. going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Thank you for all that you do for us. Thank really you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Good work. Good job with the pitching. Good okay. Job. Bye. Have a good Bye. day. Thank you. you. Thanks for watching. Make sure you don't miss any tips, tools, or tactics for copywriters by clicking subscribe right now. And of course, you can always find us over at filthyrichwriter.com. We'll see you next time.